Hello and welcome to the Dad and Sons Podcast. Here to bring you the best and <laughs> funny, silly, um, uh, edgy news. From, uh, <laughs> I know George likes to keep it edgy. We have Liam and we yeah. have George, weed man. I like to keep it wholesome, at least. Satisfying, mm-hmm. nutritious. <laughs> nutritious. How you guys been doing this week? Mmm, busy. It's kind of flown by and also been busy. Yeah. I um actually played some games. So like, <gasps> like yeah, like actually, you remember when I was saying like uh like a month ago, I was like oh, I'm gonna take a little break. So I took a little break. I played gum uh some games from with some friends here and there, and then I decided to grab the cat game that I talked about last week. The Gunfire Reborn. Oh, game. right. The one where you were dissing playing as a cat. Yeah. That game is good. <laughs> that game is so good. <laughs> is it because of the cat or is it? Maybe I've been starved for this long. The star you know, I've just been like, cats? I got to get that that nice, that nice. Um, It's funny because I, I'm, I haven't been interested in FPSs for a very long time. Mm. And I played this game. And it, I mean, it was nice to play a cooperative FPS game. Um, it was nice. It was good. It was it was fun. It doesn't have the variety of Borderlands in terms of the guns, but it has enough. I mean, it's 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 still early access, but it's twelve dollars for three maps, two modes, a normal mode and an elite mode. Right after, I beat both. <laughs> I mean, both of that, and Jeez. and I mostly unlocked all the all the guns. I think I have like three left. Um, <laughs> How many hours? So yeah, <laughs> I'm like level seventy or something what? like that. I think I'm oh, level. Dude. Yeah, yeah. It, it. I mean, it didn't take me that long because I. How long is not that long? I think it's about twenty two hours. I can check on Steam. Hours. It is a lot of hours. It's a lot. Of, I I played it right after. I was like, oh. This game is uh yeah twenty three hours, um, f- uh, forty one achievements out of the sixty, um yeah it's it's good. <laughs> Our so boys far. back. Our boys back at it. It's it dude. It, it's it's a really good game. Twelve dollars. You'll definitely get your twenty hours out of this game if you enjoy cooperative shooters. There, there's a decent community. There there isn't like the the crazies on there yet because I played that game. It ignited an an urge to play an FPS, and I think because I kind of restarted my my uh, my 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 gaming hunger, I picked up Warzone. It's free. I didn't know that. Yeah, Call of Duty Warzone. How long did it take you to install it? The one thousand oh gigabytes it is. It's so long, man. I left that thing on all day. I don't have fiber over here. I, I'm, I'm not that. I'm not that lucky. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's good. It's almost as big as one patch for the regular Call of Duty game nowadays. <laughs> have any? <laughs> I know. Like I know. Me three gigabytes the other day. Like their update. People are like what yeah. the fuck? It's insane. It's an I don't. Update. I don't. I don't. I don't have the gigs for this, guys. And I. I think they. They put in the regular game in there as well. I'm supposed to be only downloading Warzone, but apparently I think they, they put in like the Call of Duty stuff in there as well. You know, maybe because they were doing a free weekend this weekend. I don't know. Maybe. But um, I know me and George played back it was at... was Blops 4, right? Yeah. No, this is Modern Warfare. Warzone is Modern Warfare, I believe. Yeah, but it was Blops 4 that we were playing. Was it? For Warzone? Well, it was a battle royale kind of mode that they had added to. Yeah, what? What? Yeah, it wasn't Warzone, right? Warzone is a sing- is like a standalone battle royale new thing, right? But they did experiment <laughs> off the oh, back of really? the official release. Yeah. yeah oh, this Warzone, is the second Warzone version. Warzone is like a standalone thing. It's like its own game. Uh, no. Oh, it's connected. Oh no, Warzone is connected. Is it using the same engine or something? 
Yeah, like you literally play. You can like they had a free weekend from Warzone. You play multiplayer, and also right at the menu, you can buy Modern Warfare. It's like oh, buy Maybe. Modern Warfare to unlock oh, yeah, 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 operators yeah, in Warzone. Think, you you have yeah. to buy Modern Warfare, the game. No, so Warzone you can just play by itself. Yes, but you yeah. can't unlock anything much. Not 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 a lot of operators unless you buy the game. Which is connected to Warzone, which is interesting because mm. if Maybe it that's was it's completely so standalone, then you'll be just be able to just unlock operators. Um, yeah, maybe there's a lot of uh, content for the main game that you're downloading as well, and that's why yes, it's such a that's such a big package. That's why. Yeah, yeah, it's that's got why. such thick gigs, thick gigs, thick. But <laughs> but yeah, like I, it, it's good. It's good. It's free. You should pick it up and and. I'm not gonna lie, Gunfire Reborn was freaking good too, and I'll probably go back every time they do a patch. So that was like a that's like a Borderlands ish type of game, right? So yes. how many Randy Pitchfords out of Randy Pitchford do you give it? Oh no Randy Pitchford. Um, which is good. <laughs> Zero Randy Pitchfords, because yeah, this so is a like, good game. Yeah. It's so a one good... one being a nine. <laughs> Ten Randy Pitchfords <laughs> being a zero. Now, now that you've played it, though, have have your minds turned on the cats? Do you still hate the cat people? No, the the, the cat is actually, I actually like the cat better than the dog that you play. They yeah. they both have oh, different. We were, right. we were right. We have a splat fest over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, look, they 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 have uh different uh mechanics. Uh, so when you play the game, you have these ascensions that give you, um, depending on which character you're playing, give you different perks that you can kind of like build around with your guns that you pick up from the floor. Like the cat will have like 40% fire damage and corrosion damage and and um, thunder damage and stuff like that. When the dog is more of a dual wielding character where you can have like, oh, you get a... a uh, boost to duration and boost to health and boost to um, damage while dual wielding stuff like that mm. um, and you get that at the end of every stage and if you beat like epic bosses epic bosses <laughs> use your epic coupon they have like these hidden vaults everywhere that you have to find it's it's it is pretty fantastic for like a bare bones game like this is early access but it's pretty fantastic. The, the, I will say the only thing that's pretty bad, I wouldn't consider it like pretty bad, but it is annoying is when you die, die, you're you're done unless um until they defeat like the boss at the end. And sometimes that can take a long time, uh, especially if you're you're playing with a random group. Some of these guys aren't aren't so good, um, even though you're playing against uh bots essentially. These bots are it, they're they're good. <laughs> the bots are. Can you fun. not play? Can you not play solo at all? Yes, you can. Absolutely. Oh, okay. 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 You can. It, it's just it's just it's fun to have people there. It's, it's fun, fun to, to have, have friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Like j just to just to kind of get you over the hump to kind of understand what people are doing and what's possible. It's nice to see some like other people popping in and then and people talk. And it's mostly an older crowd, unlike uh, playing um, <laughs> Call of Duty. Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, it's been the Xbox days since I've seen the the type of toxicity in a like a, a Call of Duty or any FPS in general. Just oh my god! I mean, people were shouting out racist slurs. Like it was Jesus. Nuts. It, it never ceases to amuse me how this cute cartoony game where you play is like adorable little cat people is the one that has yeah. the, <laughs> the, the, older the I didn't run into anything bad. Not one person was bad. And I play a lot of games. <laughs> Let me tell you, I play a lot of games. And like most people wouldn't talk until like, like a little bit later until like we all got serious. You know, you got to the last stage and like, all right. All right, so um, uh, anyone need this uh, scroll? Because you get these like little scrolls, and you can kind of drop for each other to kind of fill out your build um, by the end, so you can actually defeat the boss um, and get all the the good souls to use to upgrade your tree. Cause so you your tree 
ke- you can like keep the your Dark tree. Souls of Borderlands yeah, games. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Your tree is what you upgrade every time you die. Uh, and in your tree, it, just like Souls, it levels you up every time you purchase something on there. Anyways, it's good. It's a good game. That's it. Gunfire Reborn is good. Warzone is also pretty fantastic. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I've I've enjoyed like the the little bit I've played of it. I've just I'm played so a intrigued, it. But the yeah. just the installs is so big. And, it's and like overnight, it's not man. even that. It's like it's the initial install, but then hearing about like subsequent updates after that. Like if they're updating like every month or so. Fucking eighty gigabyte sized updates every like month is just like no thank you. It, there was a free weekend. There was a free weekend for multiplayer. There was a free. It was a double XP. Um, but I, I wanted to ask you guys. So I I was playing Call of Duty and I realized, you know, I'm thirty years old now. Hmm. I still got it. You still got it. <laughs> I still got it. Did you win? You still a game? got the reflex. I'm not complete shit. Are you winning, son? Uh, did oh I've gotten I've gotten third and fourth place a couple times that in Warzone, winning. but in in multiplayer, yeah, I I do win. <laughs> multiplayer is different. <laughs> multiplayer, you have control. It, it depends on the map. Sometimes the maps that they give you in the free the free weekend is kind of chaotic. So gunfight when it's just three v three on the map, your skill can rise because no one's spawning behind you constantly. You know, because it's nothing you can do about that. Like, you could just camp if you want. I mean, that's how yeah. you get rid of that. But I, I like to be aggressive. I'm really aggressive. So how many how many times have you won in the gulag? Is it the gulag? Oh, almost every time. It's like a, a 98%. That's cool. Jeez. I like that. Is it? That is a really cool design idea. I like the idea. Of that. Yeah. Like, it's, you get a neck. It's you get a second chance at life if you take somebody else's life in a one-on-one yeah. death match. I like that. That's a really cool idea. But the tension seems like it would be pretty cool too. Yeah, it's it's yeah, and then you can walk around and throw rocks at people. Gulag is not the, <laughs> Call the worst of duty. Part. Yeah, <laughs> um, but when you're in war zone, that's when I die. Like it's just if you don't have teammate call, like no one's calling things out. Like I need to get like a group. I think to like How actually does... win properly because I can't I can't carry. You know? How does it compare to those sessions we gave Black Ops for, uh, like, what was it, like a year and a half ago, two years ago? Shit. It was a while ago. Wow, has it been that long? It was. It was like last time I was in Tokyo. I remember listening to the episode. We wow. had some sessions where we got some groups together and got some vehicles, and I, I genuinely enjoyed it. I remember having some some good fun with that. It, there it's... there was a an interesting mix of vehicles, but I do remember them never really feeling like uh, they had the net code all there in terms yeah. of keeping the vehicles as synced up with the people on foot. It, it feels like nowadays the games that I've played, I don't, at least for Call of Duty, and um, I, I don't deal with like, oh man, I, I should have killed him. It's either I'm way more, I'm a way more positive guy or I just don't run into that anymore. <laughs> Yeah, it's either one of the two, or maybe I've just been doing well. I d- I don't know, but but not like that well. Like sometimes these dudes are just that. They're just good. They're just really good. It, it, there's something. There's something about controllers. Do they do they have some type of snap aiming? Because I see that a lot on the kill cam, where they just Controller, press. Uh, I don't. I mean, if you were playing in single player on a Call of Duty game, it would have auto aim adjustment, right? I don't, oh. I don't, I don't, I don't think in multiplayer. Oh, okay. Is oh, okay. it cross play? Yes. In, in something like Call of Duty with a really fast time to kill, like you should be able to notice right off the bat who's, who's playing with the controller and who isn't. Oh no. Some, some controller guys are really good. Some controller guys are really good. Eh, but I'm I sure mean, that they're some, never some as good PC as the, players are uh, complete garbage too. <laughs> yeah. Right, but but the ceiling, the ceiling, <laughs> the ceiling in, in of of these two worlds, I feel one is a much higher tower than the other. You know, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, for sure. That's the climb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I get. I, I heard people have been cheating on uh on controllers and stuff like that. They have like modded controllers. I was like, Jesus, man, this is like the old days. I didn't know people still do this. Those guys with the scuffs. 
You remember yeah, that? You get ben? the auto aim, sure, but but with the mouse and keyboard, you could just point and click on whatever pixel on the screen you want without without having to to fiddle around with a pressure sensitivity or a spring. You just point and click on the bad guys. But if you yeah. can have a computer help you auto assist, <laughs> the way the way I remember Blops Four working was that um. You you typically didn't like instantly kill someone right away like you do in a normal Call of Duty game because the distances were larger. Like that map was so big and that people typically spawned so far away from each other that it was like the follow up shots that were the ones that actually made the kill. And that had me liking it way better than a normal Call of Duty game because I don't think I ever got it. <laughs> Like, when I think back on me trying to play Call of Duty, I, I remember days where I would mash away at it for, for like, a good four-hour stretch, and I'd, I'd get into the mood of, of maybe hitting third, third place to fifth place, but I never got good enough to, to reliably hit first or second. The time to kill in Call of Duty, in particular, has just always been, like, Wait, like you're, like, you're like, talking like about that. Like, you just get struck by lightning. You're, you're you're talking about multiplayer, or you're talking about like battle royale and multiplayer and oh, okay. and the Blops were battle royale mode. No. I remember having so much more fun with that than the usual because it felt like I could live longer. Oh, yeah. I'm so the opposite. Battle royales frustrate me endlessly because of how slow they are. I have zero patience. I just want to. I just want to jump in a deathmatch. No, you want you want the lightning strike. I just want to jump in a deathmatch and just like. I don't care if my KDA is like fractionally positive or negative. As long as yeah, I got some satisfying I, I kills and I killed some people, like I'm I'm happy. I use like, multiplayer to to practice to actually get back yeah. up to speed ba because like, battle I'm, royals, unless I am there is old. like yeah. this is why Warzone's kind of intrigued me a little bit because the whole it, gulag coming back bit means that people are more aggressive and there's more chance that you're just engaging quite often. Like I actually couldn't stand PUBG. It's the most boring game Slow. I've ever played. Yeah, it's it's not Apex. Apex is like that too. I don't know what they've done with Apex um, lately because it's been mm. like what a couple years since we've played, um, since it yeah. came out. Well, but it, you, it Apex you used to run and you would meet nobody. Warzone, it's intense. Like especially if you play solo. Every sound that you hear, you turn off the music and everything like that. Every sound, like yeah, and then people are waiting for you. People are waiting for you. you hear a little sound, and they're like, "Wait a minute, did I just hear someone move?" And they're thinking the same exact thing. It is so good. Me and this uh, this random dude made it made it to the end, man. And we we're trying to figure out what the best position to be at at this hill. And we just like there's people coming from all corners. Oh my god! You know when you just fought, you fought to be there. <laughs> you fought to be there. Slowly this walking up this cast. There was this castle and everything, and we just like we just murdered everyone on the way up, and then we got to this hill, and we just we just got flanked, and that was the end of our story. <laughs> it was just the end. It was just so sad. It's like, oh man, nah. And you watch the you watch the kill cam. You're like, nah. There's no way we're gonna win against those guys. Those guys are just better, playing better than us. But so yeah. what 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 kind of launcher do you use for it? Oh, it, it's it's Blizzard. It's Blizzard. So the same one is is Overwatch. Yes, yes. So you you should. You I should think I have that installed there and be able to um just just casually install it. Yeah, I need I need a yeah um I and and this is all and I've did pretty good. This is all with a sixty hertz monitor. I just want to say. I know I know how people mm -hmm. get crazy with uh specs and all that. All you gotta do is turn off VSync, get a decent mouse. And he, you all good. And then make sure you refresh rate is over 60 and you're good to go. There's plenty of videos for you to watch. And that's, that's all you need. That's all you need. After that, and you get that 144 hertz if you want. Or, or 240. George, what do you have? 144? I've always had 144. I didn't know they go up to 240 nowadays. Go, well, it's 1080p. But yeah. If I'm going to buy a monitor, I, I would like to have a monitor that has like for at least 1440p. I want to experience everything first. I mean, w with every game, and then if I want to go hardcore, I can just make a little, a little 1080p window. I feel like I got more out of 1440p than I was expecting. Like, like you usually think, oh, 
that's uh just just kind of smaller text but it turns out that for long distance gameplay like like especially in games where you have to shoot small things far yeah. away that bump up to 1440p really helps out yeah i'm i got i got 32 inch monitors man I, Jesus I gotta, Christ! Yeah, man. Yo, yo, yo! I'm telling you, man. I'm in my 30s now, man. As soon as as soon as I went from 29 to 30, everything started going downhill. <laughs> everybody, everybody listening to this, nodding their head like, "Yep, I know what Matt's talking about." <laughs> I know what Matt's talking about. I'm on the cusp. Officially, of Dad. I'm on the cusp of buying a 4K TV, but I'm also tempted by buying. Some form of 32 inch monitor or some shit. Yeah, what man. do you do with all those inches? <laughs> <laughs> you get used to it. <laughs> I, it just it just seems like like too many inches. Give give me give me 18 or 20 inches and 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 I'm good. 32 That's inches it? just might kind of overwhelm me. My peripheral would get covered up. I'd I'd be covered with all these inches that. They just start making them in, you know. They're not penetrating my my field of uh, vision. <laughs> I have I, I so I've got a work monitor on my desk at the moment, and it's definitely not thirty two. I think it's maybe twenty four. Oh, oh lord, my it's eyes pretty hurt. good. Is that yeah. small for you? That's small. What? Why are you it's oh lording 4K. a twenty four inch man over here? It's four K. Yeah. And the monitor I'm looking at you guys. 4K on 24 inch. Holy shit. That thing is must be sharp as hell. You must cut yourself. But your your eyeballs are like one inch. I I think I can show you. On those on those stories. Yeah, please show it. That's ridiculous. Oh, it looks pretty big actually on the on the camera. It looks fine. There's, so, there's the so microphone this is, for scale. This is the tiny- looks big on the camera. Look, oh, look! <laughs> it doesn't look as big as my forehead, though. <laughs> see, see, that's not that's not thirty two, though. It's not thirty two, but it does look nice. Yeah, yeah. It looks super sharp. I wouldn't be able to read. Yeah. On on twenty seven inches, four K. I'm just like, no, I can't. I can't do it. I would, cause cause at at twenty twenty seven inches at four K. Unless you're, unless you're doing like something specific that need 4K, like you know, drawing or something like that, you have to bump up windows to um 125. I think on, I have on it 125 on this one. Yeah, because there's no way you can read unless no, you're actually, like it's, it's a youngin. It's 150. Oof. Yeah, yeah. Put it up to 125. It gets worse. Yeah, so that's why that's why I want a 32 inch. If I want to get a 4K, I want 32 inch. But like, it's gonna be a while, I think. Well, what if um you just have to like move your neck more to look at the extra details that are thrown across a wider screen, and it ends <laughs> up like straining your 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 neck and your shoulders by by all I the mean, extra this is quite a you'll wide have to do. Space. I de- if I if I sit here, I can sort of see both monitors at the same time. But I gotta have thirty two. Like I can put up everything I need when I'm editing up in in every section of 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 both monitors and you just have clearly. one or two no i have two no, no, no. two two, two. what do you two. do with the other one <laughs> what, do you, what mean? do you do with all those inches i could take all right i'll take a picture of my workspace in adobe premiere and then you'll see that i have like i use it i use it all yeah because i there's definitely so use much two monitors, there's so 30 yeah two, you got yeah, a your whole vector scopes, you got a 64 inch. You gotta scrub <laughs> through your, your, your footage. You gotta you gotta do all sorts of stuff, man. Yeah, I guess Matt is like a video editor by trade. Yeah, it's um, it's for a video editing. It's that is for it, video it, editing. Yeah, for video editing. <laughs> to play Call of Duty Warzone's more like. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Do, I need a do one to just play <laughs> play you Warzone. Yeah. You dirty sure. liar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. no. Yeah. I, I just, I just hope that that you like paid for those with Zuckerberg money. They're not expensive. They're too. They're, they're, not. they're just sixty hertz. They're they're not expensive. They're um. Are they 4K? one of them were two hundred dollars, which Whoa, I consider, yeah, which I consider not expensive if you're getting like a uh, a fake ten bit monitor. You know, are they four K? No, 
They're not 4K. No, 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 no. no. They're, they're 1440. Uh, for 4K. It, the price jumps from like 200 300 all the way up to 800 <laughs> to Jeez. get like to get like a good one you know not like some tn panel garbage or something like that i don't know why they even would have a tn panel one it's it's weird um at least that's what they had at microsoft at the time the dell one is like 800 something dollars i'm like nah i'm good 800 dollars is it's just like right over the cusp right there Right over the line. So, so, what LG, have you guys so I'm looking at Amazon Japan, and there's like a there's an LG 4K for like just over four hundred dollars for thirty two inch. Yeah, no I mean in Japan way. they say three they say thirty one point five. Well, yeah, they say it over here too. Do they? Because in the UK they don't. They always round oh, it. Yeah. So it confuses <laughs> the shit out of me. <laughs> it's like, wait, I, I want my extra point five inches. Yeah, I'm still just at a loss for for actionable ways Ooh. to make use of all those inches. It's just, it just seems like too many inches for wow, me. A lot of inches talk. A lot of inches right. talk. Uh, this podcast. That's all George is thinking about. He's thinking about seeing those inches on those inches. He wants to know how, how many inches he could fit on the inches of the screen. If only you guys can see the camera. I'm going one inch at a time. <laughs> 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 what have you guys been playing huh yeah yeah i was gonna say you could use those big ass monitors to play really really cheap indie games like like the 1700 or whatever indie games that came with the uh itch.io black lives matter bundle <laughs> let's see yeah. let's see what it's currently at 1500 is uh what we're at now and they've and they've raised over what seven million dollars now on the 11th they surpassed five million dude there's spreadsheets there there are lists there's search indexes yeah of must plays because i I have it but yeah so any wait so anybody who doesn't know itch.io released a bundle that you could pay a minimum of five dollars for where you got pretty much like more games than you would ever be able to play with ever in your entire life. And it's, it's there's a, a lot. There's, it's there's it's a lot. overwhelming. And 99.9% of it is stuff you're not going to play. But what was included in the bundle is about 20 to 30 really good games, including games you should play anyway, like Celeste and Overland and Nuclear Throne mm, and there's, Octodad. There's Night in the Woods. Night in the Clean Woods. Games. Pyre. Uh, Oxen free. Pyre. Oxen free. Gotta play Pyre. Pyre's a very interesting game, but it's, it's, it's for five dollars. If I can give it a try. It, it's yeah, it's a no brainer. But by the time it's you no listen brainer. to this, it'll be over. So uh <laughs> I hope you did I hope you did buy it. Uh all three of us bought it, right? Oh damn, I can't even well yeah, I get well they have they have some like pen and paper RPGs in there too. Like Yeah. That's crazy, man. They have that's assets. Crazy. They have assets as well, assets you can it's use for bad, free, man. like in your Unity or Game Maker games for free. Now you own the assets. There's all sorts in there, and it's so it's out 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 of what a no brainer it absolutely is. Yeah, it's it's so deflating, kind of how hard it is to navigate just what <laughs> what an overwhelming experience it is getting one thousand five hundred games for five dollars. It is. It is unwieldy. Let's put it that yeah. way. Uh, yeah. So the way you basically redeem these is you don't get the Steam key versions that you would maybe with itch games, like for example, Celeste or something, but you ha- you get a unique URL tied to your account that gets sent to your email address and you click the URL in the email <laughs> and then you can search for the games in there and it takes you to where you can download them. And that's you, you, you have to Amazing. keep that URL saved around for a while and when when you are searching into that search bar you're it's they're they're not very thoroughly or comprehensively exhaustively across all 1500 titles tagged and labeled and whatnot if you don't already know what to search for you might be having a hard time there are some like dev made spreadsheets some google spreadsheets that have scrubbed the database of this 1500 game long list and uh tried to to make organizable categories by by rating and controller support and i ended up playing through a mortician's tale 
How is that? Oh. I have yet to play that. That's one of the ones that's on all of the, like, these are the ones you must play from the bundle list. Yeah, yeah, and I wonder if that's because the game would be a hell of a lot harder of a sale if it wasn't one of 1,500 games in a $5 bundle. Uh, I think it's already been quite successful. It's always, like, one of Itch's top games. It has been since it released, like, two years ago, so I doubt it's actually needed this boost, but it's definitely included in all of the the, the top games you should play lists. <laughs> yeah, I I mean on Steam where they were selling it for for I think 10 or over for a little while, the reviews are a little more mixed, but I feel like that comes from the whole price versus longevity conflict. It's it's not going to last you more than 2 hours. It's a point and click uh visual novel style game where a lot of the um activities that that they're doing aren't necessarily gamified down into mechanically crunchy systems you check on your emails every day when you wake up as a a witchy dainty goth girl and then walk over to a mortuary station where a new fresh body gets gets delivered to your workplace and you like learn an interesting story about them as you go through the process of preparing their bodies for the funerals and their uh, families and their relatives and what they did with their lives and how they died. And some interesting little vignettes that present the terminology is death positive and interesting little vignettes that present death positive looks at the death industry. So one of your jobs might be to like, um, preserve someone who committed suicide but their family might want them to have an open casket when the guy who committed suicide wanted a closed casket their family also doesn't want to mention that there's any suicide going on in this person's death and so you overhear some interesting conversations from people at the funeral who might not fully know a lot of the story that you're that you might know as well having prepared the person within those those little short stories that get framed to you inside your your job of preparing these bodies is also a bigger story involving an evil corporate chain of funeral homes who are like trying to strong <laughs> the most evil of people who are trying to strong arm out the the quaint mom and pop funeral home that uh you and and your fun adorable characters introduce the quaint game into but wait, are there chain funeral homes? I don't think I've ever come across. That. Yeah, evidently that's a thing. Thankfully, I've never, I've never needed their services. So, if you ever need the services, you might find out about some really nasty shit going on in the funeral industry that this game, A Mortician's Tale, can fill you in on. Um, apparently, a bunch of really toxic chemicals are used in the process, and so you can. Uh, I, I, I don't know if one of the cases directly addresses it, but you do overread some email flavor text about them arguing over whether or not they want to be using a certain kind of formaldehyde. There's also um, issues of, of pricing discrepancies. Like apparently the smaller mom and pop funeral homes will have their prices listed on a website, but the bigger evil chain ones require you to like call in for a quote and no one really knows how much they cost because funerals are like prohibitively expensive a lot of the times, right? Like, like that's that's that they're, they're just as much a burden on the living. Yeah, I don't particularly know. So this game kind of has a weird like activism, -y, social justice -y slant to it as well. Like you, uh, you, you, you have issues of like transgender people who who might have family that want to use their old name in the funeral. And though the game doesn't actually do a papers, please sort of thing where your job turns into the yes, no questions behind the ethics of your job turn into something you can actually slide across the screen. It's still it was still an interesting romp through a completely interesting side of the world that you never really think that much about that this game is able to like faithfully and respectively explore in a way that I would uh personally find a lot more easier to tolerate than the documentary or something. You don't gotta look at the real real dead bodies in this. They're they're cartoony and cutesy dead bodies. Like like they're they're adorable. It's it's so weird how um 
God, the stuff you do in this game is so weird. You'll be like massaging out the veins in their shoulders so that whatever stick of preserving fluid that you're pumping into their veins will will be able to make it through. And and the graphics on the screen are like this this cutesy, solid colored kind of yeah. Ollie Moss looking style that that has has this disgusting. Well, I, I'm saying that it has this very grotesque and morbid procedure depicted with a. Uh, with with approachable cuteness. <laughs> I have played a couple of the games on it, and just like trying to go through some of the ones I might have haven't played before. Um, I mean, a short hike is on there as well. That's mm, obviously mm-hmm. one of the best games. Period. That's, that's the other one. I was scrolling through it with a friend, and I really wanted to get them to play it. And I I really dug watching someone else play through that game. Like, there's a lot I missed the first time. Still amazing. Uh, uh, yeah, that game is still amazing. I played. I started playing Quadrilateral Cowboy, which is a game oh, I played yeah, a little that's bit. That's what before, I want to do too. Which is a Brendan Chung game, and it is fucking cool as hell. That guy mm. is so good at making games; it's not fair. It's um, another like like two hour thing. Yeah, he's just so good at making games; it's crazy. There's tons um, of quick little fast bites in here it's incredible yeah i played another game called fortune 499 i think it's called and it's like a kind of (laughs) rock paper scissors uh rpg card thing about uh reading people's minds and uh able to pull cards from decks that tell you what they're gonna play like a rock or a paper or scissors it's pretty fun it's cute um i only played like half an hour of it it's pretty cute i like the gameplay system and then I just got stuck playing Nuclear Throne again because I haven't played Nuclear Throne in a couple of years. And considering the game I'm making at the moment, it's very appropriate to be playing that. Uh, and it's such a good game. <laughs> it's so it's so, so like so chunky. That game is uh, ah ugh, so good. So if you were one of the three people who hasn't found nuclear throne in one of the bundles you've bought over the past 15 years <laughs> you find there's finally a bundle for you you should yeah it's stupid how good that game is <laughs> i forget it's just so crunchy so ugh, visceral screen shake mastery crunchy yeah i'm also gonna try to use this opportunity to check out minute as well mm. i was not a fan of minute but it's really cool to see it in the bundle for five bucks is one of 1500 i am so much more ready to check that out as like a a a a, a stocking stuffer yeah than, and I think than like, as as a main attraction i think like as george was saying like it was a little difficult and unwieldy in the beginning but i feel like if you leave it if you buy it and then leave it for like a couple of weeks you'll come back and you'll find like 10 or 15 articles about somebody who's gone through all of the top rated ones or something and then gives them like there's already like i think john walker from previously of rock paper shotgun now of kotaku i think he's reviewed some of them already and like there are lists starting to crop up of people playing some of the more popular ones that are outside of you know the must plays of celeste and a short hike and minute and pyre and all that so stuff that is outside of that what i'd like to know is how they could have a list of 1500 games behind the scenes when you buy the bundle like internally right how could they not have released a list externally that's that's presumably as navigable as whatever they're working because i imagine it was it was just rushed right i imagine it didn't we're talking about a scale that was unexpected the game it started with 700 games right which obviously is insane anyway but they were only expecting to raise what fifty thousand dollars i think was the target or whatever and they just put a letter out to devs because I got one as well because I've got a niche account with games on it. And it's like, do you want your games to be on this? And they've just everybody said yes. Right. So it's like they didn't <laughs> they didn't exactly factor in quality. They just wanted to maximize what they had, which is shit tons of games and, and make it valuable because at five dollars doesn't matter what's doesn't matter what's in there. You'll find something you like that was worth the five bucks. So, Yeah. I finally get to play a normal lost phone. Ooh, what's that? It's a like like adventure detective game played from a, a phone interface. There's the most meme meme worthy game 
uh, pet the pup at the party, whatever it's called. Don't sleep and pet the pup at the party. Democratic socialism simulator. Can't can't wait to to fully automate the gay space communism in that one. So there you go, Matt. You can play all of those on your massive thirty-two inch scroll. Well, your sixty-four inches of mastery. <laughs> Big dog. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Mortician challenge. Thirty-two inches. <laughs> <laughs> I like things big. <laughs> I've played other games, but nothing new. There's been a lot of announcements. I feel like playing games has kind of been sucked up by Nyon every day. I mean, literally, as we speak, Ooh. there is the new trailer for Star Wars Squadrons playing live oh man you 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 got me really interested when you said star wars and then you said squadrons and i was just like this oh, is like the, know, I, this I, is I, like a like a spiritual sequel to the rogue squadron it could be VR. Which is fucking amazing so should be pretty good uh, i'll put it in they could have a vr mode made by factor five as well factor five rogue squadron dudes if there is a vr cockpit i am game they does have VR, supposedly. YouTubers stop stop spamming the, the freaking trailer and talking over it. Like just let me see the trailer. <laughs> God dang it. I don't know. Wait, it's meant to be happening now, but they've delayed it. I don't know what's like happening. Like while we're recording live streamed. Yeah, it's happening. Yeah. Wait, does that mean this counts as our reaction? <laughs> our completely unplanned, so unexpected right, so reaction. I don't know about you guys. There's one minute and fifty-four <laughs> seconds left on my clock. So in one minute and 53 seconds, we all can do oh a, the first ever Dad and Sons <laughs> live reaction to a trailer or as if Star we were easy Wars allies. Squadrons. Okay. All right. In the meantime, right. we can talk in about... one minute and 26 seconds left, what should we talk about? I mean, there's so much. I can give you a Xenoblade update. The, the PlayStation 5 is is white. Wait, we'll get, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Z- Xenoblade is... I'll give you, I can give you my Xenoblade update for the week, considering my presidential stance of last week. <laughs> Does anyone care about Sim Refinery for 20 seconds? No, it's my Xenoblade update. Get the fuck out of here with you shitty ass But we news. still have 10 Nobody seconds. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Get it out of here. For 10 <laughs> seconds, we can talk about something like like uh, the Assassin's Creed 1 side missions being in there just because the CEO's kid said so. We already talked about that, like weeks ago. All right, the trailer's beginning. <laughs> I can't believe you wasted my Zeno Blade update. No, you still have a minute. What do you mean? Go, go, go. We we have to react. 30 seconds. Wait, oh, I'm confused. Oh, now we're just looking at seconds. Jeff Keighley. Well, it depends what stream you're watching. I'm watching the EA one. You're watching the Jeff Keighley one because you like Jeff Keighley. Oh, that's where, that's where YouTube put me automatically, huh? Yeah, I'm at the Game Awards channel. <laughs> oh, is the Game Awards, like, happening? Is that happening now? No, no. They, well, I Jeff just announced your shit like he wants to. Why is he doing nothing? I can't believe I didn't get an update yet. Now we have to watch the Star Wars trailer. I told you to do it. I told you to it's do it. 10 minutes. seconds left. Well, don't you want more than 10 seconds to give us your Xeno update? Yeah, because you ruined it by talking about other shit. <laughs> Wow, this is No, I thought we were just filling the time until the trailer plays. Well the trailer trailer's starting for me, so I'll be the first to react. Oh, oh CGI. Yeah. <laughs> we're at the same time, Liam. I'm still at Jeff like, Keeley. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm watching the trailer live. <laughs> me too. You think oh you could God. escape? It's nothing interesting, uh George. Nothing you would like. The pores on Jeff Keeley are incredible this gen. <laughs> was he a CGI one like all of the PlayStation 5 presenters oh no you gotta play as the bad guys Well, because everyone wants a VR TIE fighter that's true I just wish I was looking at gameplay I mean it looks exactly how I thought it was gonna be just like yeah. something I'm not yeah. interested in <laughs> when you talk about the potential of Star Wars like RPG coming out like not not that last Star Wars game, um, <laughs> not even the, though that one was the fun. Sekiro knockoff. Yeah, yeah, but an RPG, the Old Republic coming out. This I don't care about. I don't know. Like I think in VR, this is gonna be pretty fucking sick, right? Yeah, but it's gonna be PSVR, right? It's not gonna be. No, it'll be PC it's... as well. I'm sure. Uh, what Star Wars VR game made it to PC? Which one? 
We'll find out now when it has the end slate. Star Wars let's Squadron. See, let's see. Let's see. <gasps> oh, it didn't even say. <laughs> it didn't oh, even... it's. Uh. It... Oh, it's coming s- soon though. Yeah, like pointing, pointing, and clicking on spaceships just feels like such a, a less engaging conflict than. That's it. That that was the. That, that was, was it. not worth our live reactions. <laughs> no, it wasn't. If you like those live reactions, subscribe. No. This is what I was always complaining about whenever everyone, everyone says I'm such a big stupid dummy for not liking teaser cinematic trailers like that. Yeah, I agree. It, they suck. There's, there's no point. It, 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 the CG wasn't even that good. <laughs> I mean, I, not to clown on the people who made it i can't do that but like it's just (laughs) you know what i'm saying like it's just it just doesn't really show off the game it doesn't doesn't really do anything here 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 are some some facts about it it's a first person dogfighting game set after return of the jedi single player and multiplayer campaigns cross play support vr support on pc and ps4 they should have shown that that sounds way more exciting than than cutscene of yeah. of the, yeah like a first person view of someone looking around a cockpit all panicky in the middle of some of those shots would have would have sold the the idea you said first person dog fighting game and that's like not them just saying flight sim or or action piloting game first person dog fighting makes me wonder if uh if if they'll go a little ham on 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 an interactive cockpit stuff going on <laughs> interactive they... cockpit yeah. All right, so uh, Xenoblades. Yeah, now you can give us the Xenoblade update before we head into like the <laughs> PS5. I mean, I just, I just want to say because we're talking about it. I mean, it's not in our news because George is mainstream as hell and he didn't even know it existed. <laughs> which is the Gorilla Collective that's happened this week. If you don't like cinematic trailers and you prefer watching trailers with video game footage in it, that was a pretty good show. The Gorilla Collective was like a, a stream of indie announce, uh, indie game announcements from all sorts of publishers: Raw Fury, Devolver, um, Humble Bundle, uh, Humble Games, uh, all sorts. And Humble all of them were like gameplay trailers. All of them had gameplay presentations. It was really good, really well presented. Some technical difficulties, um, but that was really good. There was a lot of good announcements in there. There's a, a there's a game called Wolf Stride which had one hell of a fucking kick ass trailer to it, um, but yes, Xenoblade. Xenoblade. I have continued to play it. There we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get much chance this week, but my presidential platform still stands. <laughs> I will finish Xenoblade Chronicles. The campaign promise is how much have you played? Has not been derailed. How much have you played? I- I, okay, so let's say I was at like 30 hours before. I'm probably now at like 36. Wow. Th- six hours. Wow. Get good. New. All right. Get, fucking get, missed a, a fucking <laughs> download a game for three days and then play it for three days and all stuff as well as me. Fucking level <laughs> I 70 not camp. Play it for three days. Jesus nonstop. Christ. I Some people have too much quarantine days. time. <laughs> I wish. I wish. It's still good and it's getting better and people keep saying you know i've only just started which is both concerning and also fun um i will <laughs> finish this goddamn game Ooh, you get into those hours man i just know that's what's gonna happen if i get uh p4 i'm just gonna yeah. play it right, right now and i'm just gonna feel which like was announced during the, yeah, the it just got released and uh, it's like uh, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna slow down man yeah on steam persona 4 the first Persona game on PC. Holy shit. That means Buy I it. can wait for <laughs> P5 to come out too. So how, that's- how would you guys feel if I made a campaign promise? You, you, this- won't, you won't do it. Okay. Is this what we do now? Is this what we do? When we want to finish RPGs, right, we pretend right, that right. we're on You know on why I say that, George? Campaign. I ain't trying to shut you down, George, but how many promises have you kept? All those animes that you said you were gonna finish, have you finished? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't end up doing Boku no Hero. You know, I did. Or I did finish Bebop. Neon Genesis. <laughs> Wait, I'm still going through Bebop though. I'm like halfway through. I'm. 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 I'm hitting episode eight. I think is my next one in line out of twenty six. That's not that bad. Uh, actually, let's figure that out. So, what was the episode you were on last time? 
Three. Like three? So three. So four is 20 minutes. Five, 20 minutes. That's 40. Six, 20 minutes. That's an hour and 20. Uh, no, uh, sorry. That's an hour. Then another 20 for seven. It's an hour and 20. And then another 20 for episode eight. That's an hour and 40 minutes. So I did six I watched... hours of Xenoblade Chronicles, and you did only one hour and 40 minutes of Cowboy Bebop, George. You... That's like two hours. Matt is destroying us. I always destroy you guys. You got you guys. Look, listen, you remember you remember before I got my PS4, before I started going nuts and started playing a bunch of games. <laughs> you never played anything. I I played so many games since. You're then. making up for lost time, Matt. What do you? I'm like like I just have like hours and hours upon you guys, hours, dude. But that's probably going to change because the gym's open. But then like two weeks ago, you said you were going to stop. <laughs> yeah, it, it does make me laugh that you are the only man I've ever known to be like, I'm taking a break. And then literally a week later, be like, fuck it all in, boys. 100 hours of gameplay this week. <laughs> the, not a week. It's been like a month, dude. It's been like oh, a the, month. The episode's like three episodes ago. It was. Yeah. We skipped one for two weeks. Oh, yeah. That was a very <laughs> short week. I, that was Riot Week, wasn't I, it? I, I it was Riot know. Week. It was time to self-reflect, my friend. <laughs> I'm not going heavy on games. I'm just I'm just like, I have more structure now. Instead of just being like coming home and just going, and just <laughs> gnawing. <laughs> you know, I have, I have, I've built like a routine now. You know, I get my stuff done, whatever, and free time is games, not games rule everything. I'm trying to satisfy this need or whatever. Games, games, games. Plural. Stuff is opening now. I'm hanging out with friends again. Things are healthy. You know, quarantine doesn't have me on some crazy. Your gaming, your gaming hours are at a healthy 30 to 40 a week. <laughs> listen listen hater okay i ain't a hater i'm listen just jealous hater. dude <laughs> i can i can respect a man who's dedicated himself well you don't have a a significant other right and um you have a job that doesn't take up all your time like uh like that right like if you're developing a game i can understand it's taking all like i i manage i manage my my own hours so yeah. i have i have a little stuff so i can get stuff done during the day i have you know when i come home i'm not just trying to wash clothes and do all this and clean the room and that like i'm not i'm not doing all that because i can do that throughout the week so i have i manage my time a certain way so i can actually like play a little a little something something you know what i'm saying <laughs> I, you know yeah, i can understand yeah, yeah. and i i understand yeah, I know. you know i'm sorry i'm sorry liam sorry you could just I'm move no, out just... and be, be by yourself again my lady's barely ever fucking in she like comes back oh. for like a week and she's like uh, uh you know i'm just gonna go back to my mom's for a week but she has a job she does on the weekend that's close to her mother's so she goes back there and just stays and chills out for a couple of days it's like you know it's her childhood home so for her it's just like going back home for me it's great because then all i do is spend all weekend <laughs> making games instead of playing them <laughs> <laughs> and i could sit down and play games but then i feel guilty for not being productive i hate yeah. myself. yeah i hate yeah. myself yeah yeah the, yeah the 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 self-employment pressure to always be on the clock all the but time I don't even is... mean to. i'm just i'm just stupid like I, my job is to make games. Why am I wasting my own free time to make another game? No, you're doing the right thing. You're doing the absolute right thing. But is it? Because now I can only play one game. <laughs> like, Because I've made the stupid commitment to finish one of the largest RPGs in the past. Just break the commitment. No, because you know you're going to. I would be a bad president. Why would you force yourself to do something unenjoyable? But I'd be a bad president. But I'm enjoying it, so that's that's not so bad, right? And also, I'd be a bad president. I don't want to be a bad president. You don't have to play that one game to finish it. I mean, if I play don't play games. that one game, I will never finish. <laughs> and there's nothing, there's nothing not like on the it, horizon, <laughs> right? I don't, I don't care about The Last of Us Two. Like Paper Mario is like uh, maybe, but like there's nothing on the horizon yet until September. 
So I've got all summer to just be like, I don't know, I'm just I'll play the odd indie game now and again. But in but, terms of like in the, in front of the TV time, I'm just gonna play Xenoblade. If it's a 70 hour RPG, then that just means it's just three days. <laughs> so you just have to play for three days straight. That's all. So over I'm a weekend, three man. Days. I'm over a weekend, mad. get some Doritos, just man. Don't sleep. I heard, I heard the Doritos for... have a new formula, man. It's probably pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, load up on gamer fuel hook up a catheter if somebody yeah, could man. call my boss and just be like hey for the sake of science we need Liam to just eat pizza and Doritos and finish Xenoblade that's a quick in, way in to a gain stint weight. of let's say five days because you know kind of need to sleep a little bit isn't it ridiculous that it would take me five days if I decided to sleep a bit to get anywhere in this game oh god what have I done? Okay, so then you'd have 50 hours divided by five days. That's 10 hours a day for sleep, Liam. We need to talk about these two shadow hours. We're not talking about my time where I'm like doing other things, which are specifically. <laughs> no, there is no other things. Fuck, <laughs> fuck eating. Fuck he's in the restroom. It is time to get a bucket. This is why George doesn't finish anything, because he has to pee every five minutes. So I don't suffer from that problem, but I still need at least an hour to shower and do some business. Who needs a shower over the weekend oh, when the girl's actually, not there? No, I don't. <laughs> no, I, no, I don't. Because unlike George, I, that was a joke. Please clean yourselves. <laughs> I'm not. A, I'm not afraid of poo particles, so I could take the switch to the bathroom, and the hours just keep continuing. Cover it with plastic. No, I, I told you guys, though, the Switch changed my mind. It blossomed my, my attitudes into a completely different place. I have matured and become a better person and no longer fear the poo particles that I once did. There's probably things growing inside your Switch, George, <laughs> by now. Things are just growing. And you know what? At this point, I will just embrace them and welcome them into my community. <laughs> oh, I mean, it couldn't, it's the, not the worst the thing ecosystem that's going on. <laughs> Oh my god! I need to get my my switch is slowly dying, man. I brought it over a friend's oh, place dude. to play some Smash, and left Joy-Con is just drooping on me. Yeah, mine is dying. His face is melting. No, it's charged. Freaking stupid Joy Cons. Yeah, my right Joy Con is fucked. Quasimodo ass Joy Con of mine is is going. Yeah, man. All right, let's get out of here. Let's let's, out. let's let's take ourselves to the news with force powers. <laughs> the ship from Star Wars Episode 2 and unlock the power of the Force in Star Wars Jedi Starfighter. Red T for Team. He he hello. W welcome to the news. <laughs> PS4 looks like a router. Everyone says it. <laughs> Everyone knew it when they saw it. Everyone was uh, rushing to tweet that shit out because it, it definitely looks like a fucking router. Like, no doubt. It looks. It is probably no. the ugliest system I have ever seen in my entire life. I'll still really? get it. I don't care. Yeah. I don't, uh, it's absolutely. Ever? Why would they choose white? They've been black this whole time. You lived through the Nokia Engage. Wait, wait, is suddenly they're making a political statement? Like, what is, what is happening? Yes, yeah. yes. You <laughs> lived through the times of the Nokia Engage. I know you were a child and not fully aware of the world at the time. Yeah, But you course. were still alive during the virtual I boy. I played it. Like, yes. There, there have been ugly consoles. We have been through periods of ugly consoles before. And I don't know if I would say this is the ugliest. So, I agree with Matt. That it's like it's ugly. It's not the ugliest because I actually think the original Xbox One is like the worst looking thing. <laughs> that they go honk. Wait, 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 wait. Are we referring to the OG Xbox or the no, no, Xbox One? The Xbox One, the VCR okay. recorder, wait, what? The gloss vent thing, the original wait, black Xbox One, right. The, oh. the, bo the box, the v VC, it had no, nothing oh, to it. I Fine. like that one. I like it's clean. I'd rather have there be nothing to it than... But it's it's half glossy and half a vent. It's so I like stupid. It. I don't want to see it. So you're right, yeah. Matt. And the reason I don't like it is not the shape. The shape doesn't bother me. It's so fucking white. Yes. <laughs> It's Excuse like me? looking. It's, at, it's like yeah. looking at a wall. I don't want to stare at a white wall. Yes. <laughs> what it like? 
like why would you have pieces that could break off the system oh yeah, yeah i'm a little really that's stupid. the one thing that i'm like the most worried about i actually uh eh, i think it's like ugly in an et way like like for me through my george eyes it's so ugly that it's kind of cute and it's because it either a reminds me of a panda bear because of the color scheme and the like curviness the kind of chubby bottom to it or b reminds me of the cute little astrobot robots and c i actually think it's kind of neat that they would consciously keep their mascot right. character quote unquote in mind yeah. when making this stuff i don't think that's the case <laughs> so like yeah yeah i'm with you it is ugly but i also like don't <laughs> care that much so it's weird because it's ugly but at the same time i fucking love that it is like an abomination <laughs> it's so big it's so stupid yeah yeah the scale of the thing though is something that's hard to tell without the other consoles next to it like you, you got to say, like the stream with all the games, like they they killed it. They killed it. Killed so it's it. just like killed it. They 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 absolutely killed it. I've never been this excited to play games in a while. I was like, oh shit, okay. But it's an abomination. Like it's it's crazy. It's like oh, to play <laughs> these games, you have to buy this ugly shit. <laughs> ugly. It's, it's there is a quite a famous like uh air ventilation system in japan like this shop it's almost like you stand it mm. against the wall and it's oh, yeah, like seen a it. yeah. humidifier thing. like a dehumidifier type thing it looks exactly, exactly the same like, <laughs> like like to a t that even shop even shop the company tweeted about it being like oh, we already got the ps5 lo, 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 lo. <laughs> <laughs> that's how they said it too i'm sure <laughs> it's brilliant yeah. it's such an abomination it's so odd and amazing that i mean the controller is but ugly as well but uh, hey i'm still gonna buy it it looks like it feels interesting i can yeah. the, the like shininess of it the glossiness of it looks 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 fun to hold. Yeah, but if you look closely, when you see the CGI references of it, it has like the matte texture on the inside of the like the wings or horns, whatever the hell you want to call them. Oh my god! It does look like Cell's head from Dragon Ball. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I think kind of appeals to me about the design is that it is easier to personify than the usual console. I mean, you're never gonna like not know what it is <laughs> when you when you're looking through like you're not like all the old consoles you've stored and they're all black and you're like oh is this a sega mega drive or is it like a nintendo 64 i don't know oh yeah yeah you'll you'll pull the ps5 right <laughs> out of its slot at, at first sight it's perfect <laughs> You know, my the, for the past 20 years, I've complained about how every iteration of the PlayStation controller works that looks the, exactly the same. Oh, my God. All they needed to do was turn it half white and they're golden. You can, you can yeah. pick it out of the whole pile now. I have a white PS4 controller and it looks better than this for sure. Mm. I think it's just the ratio. Like, why have like a white arch with like a completely black underbelly? Like this is this like a panda. But it doesn't look like a panda because pandas are mostly black compared to the white. This kind of just looks like an egg. It's so odd. A cute panda egg. <laughs> egg. Eggs are cute. Eggs have um nice chubby little little bottom halves that they roll around on and stumble around the kitchen counter. <laughs> what am I doing? Well, what's what's up with these choices, George? You are missing some of the the cool ones, man. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, there was a lot to go through, but uh, you put I, Odd World on here. I swear, I d I just don't get that game. There's Odd World on here. There's there's whatever Kina Bridge of Spirits is. D did you guys see the trailer for Pragmata? Like like of weird games in the announcement. Yeah. All right. You want to start from the beginning? Want to start from the beginning? Yeah. Miles Morales. Woo! Yay! Woo. <laughs> Yay! Is it a game? Is it an expansion? Nobody knows. Not even the Somniac. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a game. I mean, we all knew this playing the first one. Well, I guess I did. I think I'm the only one who liked it, right? No, I liked it. It was a good game. Oh, yeah, you liked it? Okay. Yeah, it okay. I love that game. I love that game. So anything they do with it, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going <laughs> to... I'm just going to blindly like it. 
Why was it so he confusing whether or not it was a full game? Because they didn't announce it, and then IGN posted something saying it was an expansion, and then they were, uh, somebody was like, oh. Insomniac has confirmed it's expansion, then Insomniac employees on Twitter were like, no, it's a game. It's a standalone <laughs> game. And, uh, and it was like, uh, is it a remaster of the original game with this as an expansion? It was, uh, there was a lot of confusion. Did everyone see that screenshot of the fan who replied like, yeah, but who's your source to Insomniac like, games the themselves? Game. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, okay. Was, was it IGN just confusing everyone then? Yeah. A little okay. Bit, okay. <laughs> IGN is IGN. He looks great, though. He looks really good. Yeah, he looks better. Because he did not look good in the first one. Let me tell you, man. His fade was all messed up. I was just like, yo, what they doing to him, man? You don't know how to design black people? What's going on? But he looks way better. <laughs> he looks way better in this in this one here. So the PS5 hopefully... might be white, but it's bringing in that black people technology. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, but, it, but it's looking good. It's looking good, man. It's looking good. Because it... Cause, oh, my. Mm, the voice acting, the... You feel like Spider Man. I'm <laughs> so there's there's also a remake of Demon Souls coming out, which the trailer sucked and took all the atmosphere out of that game. But then I saw screenshots of it and I was like, oh okay, that looks pretty good because the trailer takes like every sense of atmosphere from that game out. The thing, one of the things I'm noticing about the the the, the level of trailer fidelity we're at here is that it is hard to tell what is pre-rendered and what is not now. That's pretty mm. cool. With, with the, <laughs> I, I'm I'm a little scared. That's pretty cool. I like that. I supposedly the squadrons uh, trailer we just watched isn't CGI. It's all in engine footage. But that doesn't look like how the game plays, and it's hard to tell from this demons Wait, trailer what? and the Spider Man trailer how it plays. It, not that it was like incredibly good, but the CGI was a little weird. But it's still. That's still good for face expressions and yeah, yeah that's that's really good. It, that's I mean, that was like the number one thing. Like in the beginning of the stream, like it was just wow. Like finally, games that look different. The the graphics, not it's not that the graphics are better, but they it's just the lighting in them are. It's just amazing compared. There's a lot of ray casting now. <laughs> yeah. And ray tracing as well. Ray tracing so. has changed everything. And it it's made the it you know what he was saying, like, you know, you know how people do buzzwords. The guy was saying, like, oh, now we can let developers do their creative vision. Oh wow. It, it actually looked pretty fr- like what was it, Kenna? Kenna was, mm. was gorgeous, man. Kenna, Bridge of Spirits. Yeah, that one looked looked real. And there was Real another one. Well animated. Kenno was my absolute favorite thing I saw. It, there there it was, was another one with the like, so like a good looking Pixar movie. Oh, the uh, Little Devils, right? Little Devils inside. Little Devils. That's another one yeah. I want. That that also looked really good. That was a Kickstarter game six years ago, and one of the original targets was Wii U release. <laughs> wow. Um, I, now for, it's a PS5 for, hold on, game. for which game? For, uh, Little Devils Inside. Really? Yeah. Originally a Kickstarter back in like 2014, 15. Holy crap. I still just think I'm having a hard time like seeing the generational leap in the graphics, though. You we don't... won't. Like, when you've got games like The Last of Us 2 coming out, right? It's hard to see the the valley changing. It's not what it was when we went from Super Nintendo to Nintendo 64 and even then from yeah. Nintendo 64 to like GameCube and PS2. That's because you're basically looking at Crayola to paints to like Photoshop, right? It's like you're jumping massive, but now it, we're in, we're improving upon mm-hmm. what we have already. And I'll give you a good example of a game you don't have down that was probably one of the best examples, which is generic, it's Ratchet and Clank. Yeah. But from a technological standpoint, this SSD that's in the PS5, the ability for what, however Insomniac are doing it, the ability that you can shift a character and a player uh, okay. through one shader 
into a completely different area of the game and load everything immediately and have everything just work is what this generation will be about. Imagine the Titanfall 2 uh, time shift level, but like a whole game. And that Ratchet and Clank trailer was actually the one where as a game developer, I was like, oh, that's what we can do with this technology? That's pretty fucking cool. Like you have not to, you don't have to worry about loading at all. And you can do some insane shit with it. Games are catching up. That was up, really man. cool. Yeah. Ratchet and Clank was good. Yeah, I was looking at the trailer for Little Devil Inside when you guys were talking about that, and my brain in the back of my head was just like, but what's happening here that couldn't already be done? But now I flipped over to that Ratchet and Clank trailer, and I'm seeing like like chunks of the level get thrown around, like, like yeah, deformity yeah, yeah. tricks that look new. But what do you want, though? Do you want games to just go for realism? Because like we're not going to lose artistic yeah. like, style. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I don't. I don't know. Like Little Devils doesn't. I, there's no game that looks like Little Devils. It looks good. I'll. But I don't know if it looks like I'm gonna want to spend six hundred dollars for a new console to play Little Devils. This is why I think Kenner is also one of the best reasons uh, to sort of look at this, or why it was one of my favorites. Was Kenner looks like you are playing a Pixar game, and it's not going for realism. It's completely stylized. But the way the lighting of the environment is and the way everything runs is exactly like you're basically rendering a movie from Pixar. It, it's incredible. So you're you're having the technology support some form of artistic vision, right? No matter what you do. We talked about this with the Unreal thing. Like artistic vision is always going to outlast. Mm-hmm. So if you're creating a realistic game like the Star Wars game we just looked at, right? With all these characters who are meant to be realistic and it's next gen or whatever blah, blah, blah. It's not going to beat something like Kenner or Little Devils because in the long run, you're going to look at that and you're going to be like, wow, the artistic vision they had and the lighting they were doing because of the PS5 and all the loading and everything, that's what's going to be like what gets exciting. And that's why I disagree. Like, I feel like Little Devils just would not exist with coming out the PC. Well, at least, well, it probably would have came out to PC, but if they were trying to do like uh, a Wii U, it would not look like that. It just wouldn't. It would just look like a generic, you know, like indie game or whatever like that. It probably be still good, but just an indie game looking type of piece. It's just the way being able to play like like it's it looks like it's it's like a little clay animation. Like one thing I'm seeing is individual blades of grass in a lot of these games i mean you can make individual blades of grass be one mesh and then it just runs as if it was all one singular blade of grass anyway so there are ways we can already do that i think i think we've got to think of it as like when you look at horizon the trailer for horizon that is like traditional next gen look at all the particle effects oh my god look at the environments look at our our fluid water systems right like that is the traditional oh my god look at that trailer that's the ps5 but it's when you look at games like kenner i think that is like wow we're moving into a next generation where even developing games with artistic styles are going to benefit from this technology ratchet and clank is not a game that needs incredible graphics, right? But if you have the ability to load planets in immediately, that's pretty amazing. I, I think that's what's important is that what you need to pay attention to in the trailers is the little things. Because it's just like when you look at um, an image and there's something a little off about the color and you, you, you can tell the difference between two cameras and stuff like that. Your, your brain just processes it different differently. When you look at a trailer and you see something like Ratchet and Clank and you just see so much going on in the, in the, in the scene that it just doesn't happen before. It used to be very empty before. I mean, remember back in the days when we used to play Perfect Dark? You know how empty and, and desolate and, and the, back in the days in 64 days? Like yeah. nowadays you just see all these effects and everything like that. Like you just don't get that on the console games. 
and stuff that's ported over to PC. Like Ratchet and Clank, you just see so much blasting all over past you. And this is all in real time. And because usually it when you see that, amazing. like, it, yeah, it's like, it's like, wa- you remember, it's like watching those, um, is it EA that keeps coming out with these trailers that look really good? And then the game comes out and it's just like complete trash. And you just wonder what the, the division trailer from Ubisoft. Okay. Yes. So it, it's like, it's actually playing that trailer. Like, that's what I feel like we're, we're getting to at now. Or we're, we're actually playing watchdogs before they nerfed it. And, and when thinking on the jump though, I, I just feel like if you put a side by side window of, of that original, the division trailer, from E3 2013 or 14? The one so actually, with, uh... no, I would give you one better. What you should do is you should look at two things. The Star Wars 1313 trailer <laughs> and David Cage's, uh, <laughs> oh what's it called? God, the, the Dark Sorcerer, the tech demo from 2013. Because those were like seriously impressive technology for what we were having at the time. That was what everybody was like. That's the pinnacle of games. And when you look at both of them, you can see every flaw of which you don't see now, even now. So when we're progressing in the next part, we're going to look back at something like, I looked at side-by-side footage of The Last of Us and The Last of Us 2. And I imagine in most people's minds, both of those games look the same, right? Mm -hmm. But there is a stark difference in how everything is lit, how lighting works, how like... uh, your normal bump maps are on like textures for roads and cars and stuff in The Last of Us 2. It's night and day, but in your mind, it's like everything gets melded in. Like it looks realistic. But when you really like comb Pixel through peep. it yeah. and have a look and with 4K TVs, right? We're blowing everything up and everything's getting bigger. The lighting with HDR is even better. So things are now utilizing the technology we have. And that's something that I'd have to like pretend and imagine when I watch this stuff is that like it will look different in the full resolution. Well, that's the thing, right? The I, and it's like with the PS5 stream, the stream was capped at 30 FPS, it was in 1080p. And it's like nobody's getting a sense of what is truly next gen yet. When it says mm. this is in game footage and it looks like a CGI trailer, that's kind of when you've got to be like, okay, yes, this is pretty exciting. When right. you go back and you watch on YouTube in 4K or something like that, that's when you're like, oh, that's what that game really is going to mm-hmm. look like. I, I'm actually interested in Gran Turismo. I want to I want to actually play that. Does that look photorealistic yet? Because the racing games have always gotten they, pretty yeah. close. Yeah, they've gotten so close. They, they, remember Project it's... Cars? Project Cars got pretty close. I would say the inside of the car is still a little bit too... Sh- too weird but the outside looks pretty nice so that's the thing about racing games i have no idea how those guys have always somehow achieved a realistic sky like that's the one thing racing games have always been amazing at is like creating what looks oh, like yeah, you're a right. very that's realistic envir- environment yeah. that's that's nice i'm like watching it now it's, it, it look it looks nice like my, my i grew up playing gran turismo with a friend and so it's, it's just so weird to see how far we have come it's like man dude we're old we're fucking old. You remember <laughs> PS1 days and playing Gran Turismo? Like, oh, man. The the dichotomy is that it's always easier to animate non-human, boxy, machinery-looking characters like cars than people. And I bet that that's helping Kina, the Bridge of Spirits, out a hell of a lot. Because, like, for some reason, when I look at a trailer for that, there are... There are are things going on in my brain that is like, yes, George, that looks next gen. Mm. Well, those guys. So what's interesting about those guys is Ember Lab, the people who are making that. They're animators. They're not guys who make video games. Like this is the okay. Video okay. Okay. Yeah. Their background is fully in animation. There was like a YouTube video a couple of years ago about Majora's Mask. It was like a fan video, but like it was really nicely done. That was those guys. Like they are like an animation studio. So everything in Kenner is built upon their visual effects and their ability. So it does worry me slightly that it might end up being vaporware because, yeah. you know, who knows how good they are at making games. But in terms of like how it visually looks, it matches up with whatever their experience is, right? Give give animators and visual effects artists technology and you will get stuff like Kenner. 
it, it, it requires video game developers then to create that into a game. But can you have individual blades of grass in a more photorealistic art style, I wonder? Are there individual blades of grass in Gran Turismo 7? Let's... I wonder if I can zoom in close enough in the vi video to see that. But there probably is. As I said, you can create like a million blades of grass, but it can all be one mesh and then it runs easily. Like optimizing games is is something everybody is fairly good at now because we have the technology to do so. So it's not so much of a worry. I think loading and being able to load your assets and load how many assets and be able to just have the game like move at such a speed is what is truly going to be special about when we transition. Who knows? I mean, when you look at PS4 games that came out in the beginning of the PS4's lifetime, we're talking about like Assassin's Creed Black Flag or something like that compared to something like The Last of Us 2, right? With every generation, even Last of Us 1 was the end of the PS3 generation. By the end, we get really good at the technology and we're yeah. able to utilize it a lot better. So I think loading will be the first thing, right? We'll see a lot of games that just do crazy things with like loading in on like Ratchet and Clank, like loading people in different planets and stuff. And then we'll see from there. Stray, honorable mentions, Stray. I'm down, I'm down for a lot of these. Uh, Returnal, I'll play that. I like that. That looks really cool. Like first person Contra or whatever it was. That looked really cool. The uh, Res Resident Evil Village, Vladeage, Vladeage, um, has has me excited. That was my favorite Resident Evil trailer ever. I thought that trailer was good. Really? Yeah. It also like has a different style than the usual Resident Evil. Like it looks more serious and uh. Dark Soulsy. No, I I wouldn't agree with that. I think it's like less serious than Seven, trying to be still more serious than the camp Resident Evil of old. Well, yeah, it's like the camp that that I guess I, I wasn't seeing in the trailer is all. Yeah, but you gotta yeah, you, but you still look at the trailer and you see like these weird kooky characters, right? Like the 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 men and the women in the trailer all kind of look dressed strangely there's lots of weird old environments similar to old resident evil whereas seven was just straight up like horror pt levels of weirdness it, it looks very like serious like like re4 medieval europe village good good that's it's weird. a first person game that, that apparently stars as ethan that uh that means there's a possibility for a vr mode there was a there's a game in there that looked like it was from 2012. Um, uh, was it Ghostwire, Tokyo? Tokyo <laughs> Ghostwire. Ghostwire Tokyo. You mean the Skyrim esque first person combat? I, isn't this the game that that people have that weird affection to towards yeah. the developer? It actually looks pretty interesting. I mean. It's like Persona, right? It, it makes me feel like, <laughs> like an action Persona. Like it, I was like, oh, wait a minute. You're just out and about in Tokyo and fighting spirits and demons. And I like stuff. that more Japanese devs are doing FPS games. I've never I've never been disappointed by a by a Japanese FPS. When was the last time you played a Japanese FPS? RE7. Oh, right. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Fool me. <laughs> Yeah, this looks just weird enough for me right here. Looks, it looks as long as it's not like too grindy or anything like that. I think I'm good to go. I would rather a story than it to be some type of grind. I think I have enough of that in my life. Goodbye, Volcano High School. Oh anyone, no! Anyone interested? Oh no! You I brought am. it up. You brought it up. You're interested. You you think? Yeah, I'll you play think that. They, they look like fun not, friends. If it's full price, then it's a no. But like, I don't know, <laughs> man. They look a little too hungry. Those those furry kids look a little like like. It's so weird how you're like um. Furries you, you are have your a favorite, cool, George. But 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 when you look at like a cool band girl in um in in <laughs> Goodbye Volcano High, and she has like teeth that are meant for crushing through flesh and bone, like rows of pointy carnivore teeth. I'm just like okay. 
Okay, I don't know if I can <laughs> if I can fully connect with with uh with this friend on a deep emotional level they want me to if they look like they they can eat me. It was it, it it's a it was a weird it was a weird choice, I got to say to put it up, but it it's got to it's got to have something for them to have put it up on a stage. But the, I'm the next question is like like with so many of these other trailers, what does the actual gameplay look like? Well, well the other ones you can self evident, right? It's, yeah, the other ones you can tell. That one, not for goodbye, that one's like the only high. one you couldn't see. Like oh, I think it's self evident. You walk around and just talk to people like you would in most dating sim type story games. Is Life it is dating strange. sim? Oh no! I think it's I think it's more uh, along the lines of like. Night in the Woods, but 3D, Life is Strange. Like, I mm. think it's along those lines. Yeah, I, I thought, I got a Life is Strange vibe from it. Yeah. Oh, maybe it'll be um 2D. Like, maybe they're going to... It's not 2D. It's 3D. You, how you know? Like, with this art style? No. Mr. Famous Man? You can't tell from right the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, listen, you can't tell from the trailer whether or not this is a 2D or 3D video game, because it could be a a 2D video game made with 3D assets. Point is, they could plug some 3D assets in, give them some outlines and make it look 2D and maybe have like some kind of cool weird hybrid art style between the two, like South Park, that would be cool. So 2.5D, like Guilty Gear. Yeah, Guilty Gear and South Park are like very interesting games to just watch because the characters will move in and out of the background smoothly and 2D characters aren't supposed to do that. That's how we did it in Scrappers. It looks 2D, but it's a 3D scene. Oh, I was I was looking up a tutorial for for Unity, and I saw that like you can actually yep. like. Yeah, that's, yep. that's it's a, it, we use an orthographic camera in Scrabble. Okay, games. well, yeah. The point is, like, like I don't <laughs> know, I don't know about you guys. Video games. But but good goodbye, Volcano High looks 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 like it might be like I might be a little too old for this. Yeah, you know, you're also not gay enough, George. I might not be young and gay enough to play Goodbye Volcano. You think it's going to be like that? You think it's going to be like the... Oh, like it's probably going to be super type, gay. Type oh, it, 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 I it's guess when you say it, it probably is. No, it's, uh, no, I'm not I'm not like just saying it like hyperbole. It, no, it's I, it's already been confirmed like on Twitter by the people. Uh, the I didn't mention it, but I A Mortician's figured. Tale is super duper gay. You get emails in your character's inbox all the time that are like pointing out sticky issues in, in LGBT death equality. Oof. Yeah. Geez. So yeah, no, we're there. We're there. I think it can be presumed at this point that there's going to be a lot of gay people in this volcano high school. It is already confirmed <laughs> on, tw- on Twitter. It was confirmed. The main character is also non-binary. So what dinosaur friend do you want to date before school's out, Matt? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I got to see the trailer again. I might have to pick well, me that wolf. Well, has got 32 inches. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, I like how, like, uh, high school it is. You know, the whole emotions are high. And, yeah. You know, Summer like, I, it's just like, I know it's going to be edgy. Like a They're little... sitting around a campfire with beer and guitars. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. So gr- it's sentiment. Oh I, oh, I don't do sappy stuff. As long as it doesn't have as cringy a dialogue as Life is Strange has, it's all good by me. I do not do sappy stuff. Oh, I flay through it with a friend and it was an interesting it was interesting it's i don't know man i i I usually enjoy those types of games just try to see what they go how they go for it yeah not a fan of life is strange put it that way yeah well um i don't i want to consider myself a fan but nothing takes the cake of uh the walking dead making me cry so (sighs) moving on to things that won't make you cry Pragmata. <laughs> Pragmata looks like like they got you... some ideas from Death Stranding yes. that also was making me think in my head, wait a second, I want to do a side-by-side video comparison with the Division trailer from 2013 to see if seven years of graphical progress and pre-release like, like bullshot trailers has really actually changed that much. Because this is the part where I was just like, I don't know, diminishing no, returns. I, that's what I was in. just going to say. Pragmata was the only trailer that just didn't look next gen, right? 
Okay, the characters look weird, but the background that they're in, I think, looks. I I don't know, right? You could you could argue Ghostwire has like that weird kind of CGI ness to it. Does it. not look like his texture. And and obviously, Goodbye Volcano High doesn't have the style that needs like oh, the yeah, power, yeah. right? Obviously, yeah. that's obvious. But like, Pragmata was the one where, apart from the shot of like the Earth at the end and like on the moon, it was the girl. It's weird because obviously they showed off Resident Evil Village and it's a Capcom game. And it's like, are they using the RE engine or are they not using the RE engine? Because that does not look like anything. I th- I think you guys are focusing as- on the wrong thing. This guy is swole. I mean, <laughs> he must be thick under that suit, dude. He looks oh way better God. than the girl. I'll give him that. Is he look a how guy? Big is those arms human? are. Who knows? He's on the moon in the end. Who knows? Shoot, I man. liked the bouncy net. That was interesting. Didn't expect a bouncy net to uh, stop a shield. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I'm just seeing the division everywhere. The like pixelated ghost people showing up in what is very clearly Manhattan Times Square in the snow with police barricades everywhere. Okay, okay, yeah. In the other window, I have a window of the division trailer from E3 2013. And they do look pretty. I'm just saying that 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 six to seven years of a generation length of of gains just does not seem to be making as big a difference as it used to. There's actually it's it whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. it's funny. So I just, I'm watching the pragmatic thing again. I haven't watched any of these trailers since they were released. But the first shot in Pragmata when he's walking down the street. The light reflections on the bump map of the road are really sick, right? Mm-hmm. But okay. this is this is me having worked in QA. If you go to <laughs> if you go to nine sec if you go to nine seconds, go to it's nine shifts. seconds. Yeah, uh-huh. it shifts. And when the taxi yeah. when the light reflects on the taxi, yeah. the taxi yeah. po- texture pops in. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> it's so bad. It does it three yeah. times, man. Oh no. That's something I never would have noticed if you hadn't brought it up. <laughs> That's having worked in QA for fucking four years for you. Oh, well, that, that, there we go. For all the listeners at home, check check the description right now for a timestamp of what, what he's talking about. But his suit and everything looks tight. It does look really good. Yeah, it looks tight. It, the girl it looks, looks terrible, though. I, I, I wouldn't judge all the games based on this uninspired game here you know uninspired Uninspired. when it looks clearly inspired by a death stranding and b the division unoriginal sorry unoriginal game. yeah yeah there we go unoriginal game yeah like keep the white girl safe okay i don't care (laughs) i really don't care like (laughs) i doubt it's gonna get 10 i really doubt it's gonna get a 10 or 9 from ign like Oh no! It is. It is probably gonna get a ten. Prime. The build, the building warp probably. is pretty cool. Like with the stuff going around it, that's pretty cool. Especially if it's actually like you know something you can move on. The yeah, <laughs> when the satellite comes through, it is kind of very vanquish, bayonetta ish. Yeah, it just looks like a trailer. It's like, oh, this looks interesting, and then you see the gameplay, and you're just like, what? What is what? What is this? I, it's gonna be one of those. I bet it's gonna be one of those. There's a moment when it has like an LED screen on the computer. It looks really pixelated. I don't know why I'm pulling it apart. It's really stupid. Deathloop looks all right. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. For however interesting the the gameplay is, can I at least like say that this looks like one trailer that does not look like a next gen game? But it's stylized as well, right? It's by the guys who made this on it. The ultimate stylized realistic people. The implication behind all of these trailers is the question of, oh, do I want to spin a new console on this? And and as cool as the gameplay look, I just hate that there's there's stuff like that that I have to have in the back of my mind. Yeah, like, okay, with Deathloop, we at least have gameplay. It looks a lot like Dishonored. Yes. Yes, yes it does. It does. <laughs> that, that rapier, that sword looks straight out of Dishonored. There's a blink. They, they, they did a little blink that looks looks like it's out of Dishonored. They definitely uh, take a lot from some of their previous titles and also games that, if you watch Danny O'Dwyer's No Clip documentary, games that didn't even come out, they've kind of taken, they've revisited it 
Yeah, made. this thing has been in the works for a long ass time, hasn't it? It was announced what two years ago, I think, as a current gen title. But it's and intriguing. Then... I want to see more because, like, what the only thing that, that the trailer stood out to me was like you loop back right to uh, when you die. You loop back right. So how big is the game? Do you minute it and it you make small <clears throat> incremental progress? So when you die, you return to like a hub somewhere further if you got than last time. Because if you're just like restarting and going all the way back to your mm. to the start point in big dishonest style environments, I am zero interested because that sounds really repetitive and boring. Yeah, it looks all right. I. I don't know. There's some kind of weird hybridization of multiplayer to single player games going on there. So supposedly the other assassin can be played by another player. Yeah, I'm not ready to dismiss it until I actually play it, because though I'm not like the hugest fan of of Dishonored games themselves, everything else that Arcane has touched and that whole shtick of like like intellectual first person RPGs Mm. is so totally my jam. Yeah, I mean, they're very good at making games, so I don't doubt yeah. that Death Loop will be something quite special. It's an interesting <laughs> premise. I, I was of money in it. And see what I was happens. playing Thief a week ago. I'm 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 ready for more. I might give a Dishonored game a try over the next few weeks. I you need to I play Gloomwood. Like that stuff. I probably would really like Gloomwood. Yeah. <laughs> what else was that? The I guess there was Hitman Three. George read right Yeah, that rally. was a nothing trailer though. Yeah. It it got me excited to, I I want I I mean I still have Hitman, right? That I got on review and I just never finished it. Can you think of the massive environments with all of the different details and layers? Yeah, and that's what textures I, like. That is the type of game that I think would really benefit from the ability to just have yeah. shit tons of stuff in an area. And it's the last of the trilogy. I'm wondering, it's like, man, maybe I should try to play the next the 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 last two, but I don't know. They're real know. good. No, I think yeah? they're some of the best stealth games ever. It feels even weird calling them games because, yeah, like they're they're chapters of of this successive trilogy. Is two significantly better in in quality of life department? I wouldn't say qual. No, no. no. Like if you're worried about the inventory system, if that's what you're talking about, inventory, like kind of like knowing what to do in the later levels is a little okay bit weird. yeah but you, you know me i like to turn that stuff off and pretend that i'm an idiot when, when uh, yeah, yeah. A trial so and like error to figure out what's going on they have a hint system that is fairly customizable that might might help you out yeah if that's the specific thing it's pretty easy to figure out what to do at least for like the first run or so but it's just like trying to figure everything out it's like woof. Sometimes the areas like are really big and you just have no idea. You have no the idea. The implication <laughs> is that you can always hide in the background and like shoot them with the silenced pistol. Yeah, I like it's boring, stumbling though. on the Right, right. That's why I like experimenting and, and figuring yeah. it out. I, mean, I was trying to turn on the lawnmower. I know this has something to do with the lawnmower when he's when this guy's mm-hmm. golfing. I'm trying to figure Play it like out. A- and I'm just like, okay, you know what? I'm done. I'm going to give this a break. And I, I hate that I have to feel like I, I just don't want to play it because I can't figure out what's going on. Because it wouldn't give no. me a hint. So I'm no, just like, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll play Hitman 3. I'll like it. I, I just don't know if I have much to say about the trailer that kind of pans That'd the camera, right. suit them environments, and shows a pre-rendered cutscene. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. That's that's all I got for PS5. It looks It looks dope. Yeah, yeah, games look dope. I'm just a little bit deflated by just how the jump from console to console gets seems to get slower and slower with every year. And I think this is the biggest jump we've had ever. Yeah, certainly not ever. Not, not ever. Bad. I'm talking about like once we've re reached, you know, what we considered like good or yeah, the closer Icarus gets to the sun, mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it's tough, right? Like, I can only see this next gen upgrade as exciting from a technological standpoint not yeah in the sense that i'm seeing it i could i i will be able to feel it i won't like a month into having the ps5 Mm. i won't even know what load times are anymore right and it's like that kind of stuff okay here's a thought these games looked more fun to play than they did look 
like to watch trailers of just to talk about the graphics compared to the last console gen. Mm. And that's one thing that I think even the PS4 and Xbox One games that were revealed weren't nailing. Because like if I do put up a window side by side of the division being shown off in 2013 versus Pragmata in 2020. Pragmata is not a great example. I know, but but they both are or Manhattan is the reason why it's a good comparison. Like it's the same place they are depicting the same area, and it just feels like there's but a why are you, cap. Why are you picking? I don't get it. Why you're picking the trash game out of all the games here? Because of the New York scene. I yeah, full okay. I'll I'll bring up oh because like all of those look completely different and look com- like way better, and you're picking the trash game. That has you like walking around with a little girl and <laughs> flying through the air. Like, it's the trash game. Because it looks exactly like a division trailer that you can compare to to get some sort of basis for the progression happening. But it's not, it's not Project, uh, uh was it Project Athena or whatever it's just called? Oh, yeah, the, the Final Fantasy game. Where it's like built from the ground up for PS5. You see what I'm saying? Some of these games were made. And then they got the kit, and then they try to make it for PS5. That like some of these, but like you can tell, like some of the games actually like put forth the effort to actually use what the PS5 is capable of. Like this is the it's the same thing with what Liam was talking about, like in the beginning of, um, of the 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 console cycle, the, the games look kind of just okay. It looks kind of just like last gen, but as it goes, things are going to change. I'm more excited because I'm going to get to play better PC games. I'm going to get a PS5, of course, but I'm going to get to play, play better uh, I, I, ports. So, I think of it as like a game like Demon's Souls, a game I'm inevitably going to like because I like that series, right? But then if I think about the next whatever from a, a company like From Software, like Sekiro. Sekiro is a game where I die a lot, have to see a lot of load screens. It's fluid as hell. Imagine playing that with, and it'll look gorgeous and beautiful. But I also won't have to wait when I die for their load screen. I'll just yeah, jump straight into the game again. And it's that kind of small technology, uh, technological improvements now with SSD and stuff like that, that excites me mm. personally. I know you can do SSD and make PS5, uh, PS4s faster now and almost replicate that. But we're talking about games that inevitably are going to be yeah crushing in cpu power and gpu well gpu power for consoles i guess but there's something quite exciting about we've finally reached the ability where beautiful games just run just just run run immediately i mean this is not talking about how fucking massive they're gonna be to download but then that's another whole bag of shit i mean it's a terabyte right or two terabytes i can't remember uh the trailer for kenna Looks a hell of a lot better than the announced trailer for Knack. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give it that. That the stylized Knack. stuff seems to have take taken a big jump up, but but the photo real that. stuff is no, no, no. I'm I'm comparing to the 2013 Knack oh. oh, real trailer. I was like, why would they come PS4 up with another Knack? <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Yeah, Knack. Knack. Realism's hard, right? It's like I I don't know I don't know what to what people can expect even if you think of the unreal five footage the character in it was a stylistic cartoonish looking lady in comparison to a realistic character but the environments looked damn photorealistic right it's so it's like maybe we're still not quite there but by the end of this generation we'll get there and we'll have stuff you think it's ever gonna happen yeah, of course. I mean, you look at The Last of Us 2 and you're like, they're doing that on PS4 hardware? If you give a studio like Naughty Dog the ability to abuse all their staff and make like a lot of time happen, Jesus. they're going to make What's the one hell of a game at this point? on PS5, right? Yeah. Just, just look at, like, there is one scene from The Last of Us 2 that had me like, how did they do that? Which is... A character falls over and like their face goes into the concrete and the nose squishes against the concrete. Like the the deform mesh of their face. And like deforming mesh alone is computing power that and you've got everything else running in the game at the same time. Like that's he it's that's either hand animated, which so it's pre-rendered or whatever. 
or it's happening on the fly, right? I imagine in the case of the PS4 and that because it was a cutscene is even though it's in-game engine, it is probably hand animated, right? But default, like being able to just break stuff and deform stuff on the fly because you have all the power now, it's crazy. Because once you write the code for it to act that way, you don't ever need to hand animate or ever do anything again, right? It's the same as when you use physics to blow buildings up in video games, right? Once you tell it this is what will happen when it happens, you could put a thousand buildings in and just have them all go off at the same time. It computes it because it's now fast enough, whereas before we just didn't have the power to be able to do that. So you'd have to, you know, limit your scope in these things. So we're not actually changing how we do things. It's just our ability to do things is now stronger than ever. Project Athea is what it's called. What will never, no doubt, be Final Fantasy 16. <laughs> Inevitably, it will be called. <laughs> so is Resident Evil Village Resident Evil 8? Like, what is what is the deal with that? Yes, that's why they hit the Roman numerals in the village. Well, well, no, is it is it a Ground Zeroes thing? Because it could be a Ground Zeroes thing where it's like, no, like it's a prequel to RE8. No, it's Resident Evil 8. Are you following the story of these games? Are you like, is there a story in Resident Evil? Is there really a story? The virus is out. Zombies. Umbrella. That's it. Umbrella. It's constant, right? Whisker. Being the coolest Whisker. guy. Yeah, Whisker. I love Whisker's my favorite villain. <laughs> He's like West awesome, West. dude. The fight? Are you kidding me? Like, what a boss, man. Remember when Whisker puts on his cool his cool dude sunglasses and dodges rockets? Mr. Whiskers. He did have cat like reflexes. He's like he the did. only Especially other person. Especially in Resi 5. Fucking, you shoot a rocket launcher at that dude and he dodges it. God, Resident Evil 5 is is a game that is going to be remembered very awkwardly. I'm I'm sure it already has been. Only only for, for me, only like Metal Gear has like those types of bosses where you're like, oh my god, this this boss is cool. I almost don't want to kill him. Dude, Vanquish, come on. Vanquish? There's other Man, cool bosses in I, other I, video I'll, games. I'll, I'll pull up Vanquish. I'll I'll give Vanquish a try. I still haven't. I didn't realize we went on so long about PS5 trailers. We've hit in the two hours, boys. I think we're at the end. Really? I yeah, finished my seriously? water. Look at this shit. Um, I, I think we might have talked our way... To the questions? Uh, so it, it was strong. It was strong. I thought it was strong. Matt? I, it was strong. You thought it was strong? It was strong. PS5. PS5. I think there is one question that that can elegantly play us out here from from a listener though and uh it it comes from leon who says i hope i'm not being too much of a downer right now but do you ever feel bad when consuming content that you were really impressed by i'm a bachelor student majoring in english and i aspire to be a journalist and focus on tech and pop culture and i know i can do a decent job at writing uh imposter syndrome is always something that many creators experience but it's developing some sense of inferiority complex. Is it just me? Maybe no. this is something I should see someone about, but I can't help but feel bad when I see content that is so well-crafted that it's intimidating to me. Let me say something. Do it anyway. All right? Do it anyway. You're never going to know your ability to do something unless you actually do it. If you sit there and just say, okay, you know, this guy can is just way better than me. I'm never going to be that. I'm never going to be that. And you sit there and you do nothing. You achieve nothing. Nothing. Okay, you don't know what you're capable of. You need to do it. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're young, you're old, whatever. Just do it. Okay, I know a lot of people say that shit. Go ahead, Liam. Go ahead. Uh, no, like I just want to literally compound that exact thing, which is... I get imposter syndrome all the time because so all I, I. want to be is a great game developer, right? I want to make great games. It's all I've ever wanted to do. And it's all I ever think about, really. And I look at things like the PS5 thing, right? And I see a whole swath of indie developers in there, lots of people I know, and I want to be one of them. And I get imposter syndrome because I feel like I'm not good enough to be there or, or I'm not making good enough games or I'm not doing good enough. But the one thing that I never stop doing is just do it anyway, right? It's like, you don't know 
how good you are compared to other people as well, right? So you might be looking at whoever thinking they're amazing, but there might be a hundred other people behind you when you do your thing who think you are amazing too. Nothing exists in a vacuum, right? And you've got to put context into everything. You look at an amazing game, you're like, how the hell did they do that? And then you read about it and they had three years, a million dollars, and like a team of 15, right? Nothing exists in a vacuum. And like, as Matt said, 100%, just do it. You don't know how good you'll be. You, and and you, unfortunately, you're always probably going to suffer from imposter syndrome. Yeah, It sucks. Some I get it. Some people have natural talent. But if you're willing to work hard because you don't have the natural talent, it doesn't matter. You're still going to achieve what you want to achieve. You just have to work hard and extra hard. Don't give up. There's been situations I even talked to Liam about that. I've been like, I don't know if I can do this. You know, like I've been I've been I've been invited onto sets, you know, this year where I'm just like, fuck. And. You know what happens? I learned and I worked hard and people liked it and then they invited me again and again. And that's that's how it works. You know, that, that's how it works, even even in my position. So it, it, it you just got to do it. You can't be scared, man. Everyone says this shit. Everyone says this shit. And, and, and this is someone who's not talking from the top who has million dollars in his bank account or anything like that this is a regular dude telling you yes you need to work hard and just do it man fuck it even if it's even if your first thing is garbage whatever it doesn't matter if, you, if you're talking about content, it will be it's garbage it's, oh yeah it probably will, will be garbage, garbage. E- everyone's <laughs> first thing is garbage everyone look on my youtube channel look on my youtube channel look on my and edge click page. on yeah. the oldest stuff oldest to new and you're gonna see a progression of how i used to talk how i used to to edit my videos everything if you want an example that's a perfect example yeah do you guys remember the feeling of how different games and videos start to look after you get into the process of making them like once you can spot the tricks that the other the person on the other side is employing it totally changes the way you consume things yeah it's like the pragmata thing right it's like i pointed out to you guys immediately <laughs> i could see pop and textures right because that's yeah. <laughs> because they've just worked really hard to be good at what i do or I try to be and and fuck me just fake it until you make it <laughs> be who you want to be don't worry about someone else telling you what you want to be if you want to be an amazing video producer, you don't need somebody else to tell you, oh, dude, you're a really good video creator. Just just be it. Just be like, I, this is what I do. I'm going to do it. It's what you have to do. Honestly, it sucks, but you have to do it. One thing that totally happens to me is if I'm really, really immersed in something I'm watching or playing and I'm totally like appreciating all the work that I am noticing that went into it, that that I have done myself, I, uh, I, I start to not want to actually finish it. I still haven't watched the last two episodes of BoJack because the whole ride all the way to there was so good that I don't actually want to to finally put it away. <laughs> It makes me scream when I play games, like indie games that do just like this tiniest, smallest thing. I'll be like, fucking hell. How, why can I think of shit like that? Like, it, it's so frustrating. But you learn and then you do stuff in turn that inspires other people or at least other people look at it and they're like, wow, that's really fucking good. And yeah. yes, your first thing will be bad. Your second thing will be better. If you do 10 of those things, Think about what your 10th will be, not what your first will be. Practice. Practice. The first dad and sons. The first oh dad and God. sons was was not uploaded. Yeah. <laughs> I think the first two, right? We, we, yeah, we, those we've those tried were the practice it, ones. And it's, it's disappeared. We've tried to find the first episode. My first Final Games episodes. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think they're similar to Matt's videos, right? It's like the way you talk, the way <laughs> the you hair. Talk. <laughs> yeah, they're, my, my videos are pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. My first couple of episodes of Final Games is so bad, too. Yeah. Just, just do it, man. 
just or or, or what was it? What was his name? Oh, it's, it's a uh, it's a dude. Yeah. So uh, like, Leon. just do it. Leon. Just do it. Also realized that other people, including us three, suffer from this as well. Yeah. <laughs> so especially I, as creators, and it's tough because everybody's a creator now. It, it, let, let me let me let me be real. I've been wanting to do YouTube for like the past year, and I've just been like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And it's weird because to me, I keep telling Matt he's stupid for not doing it because <laughs> he's so stupid. good at it. I, I should have stayed. I should have stayed doing it. I mean, life happened, obviously. Like he shows me his stuff and it's amazing. That's that's the reason why I stopped. But like now, I, you know, I've, I'm not crazy anymore. I moved over here to California. I'm stable now. they laugh (laughs) you know like i can do something and i I, you know i i I definitely don't want to capitalize on shit that's going on now so i'm just gonna wait it out but like yeah but yeah man just do it just do it (laughs) wow uh... whoa don't like that style no don't oh liam is combing his hair um like (laughs) hitler i guess is that how hitler did it let me see that's where your brain went whoa that's rough i can't i I was thinking more like like sad emo boy yeah i was gonna call the emo this is how humid this is how humid it's a hundred percent humidity today it was one hundred percent humid it is (laughs) wait if the air is a hundred percent humid then wouldn't it just be water so somebody said this the other day, and I was like, you're stupid. It just means that is the most amount of water the air can hold at one time. So it's very heavy air. Yes. This is oh. why I, my, I'm literally like a swamp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You're making me think of uh, freaking Shrek. Now I want to look up uh, all those Shrek memes oh. now. <laughs> it's gonna consume me for at least an hour after this I podcast. Can't, I can't wait. Tomorrow is the first day I'm gonna go out and get a quarantine haircut. I cannot oh, wait. Dude, the gym's open today, baby. We're back in. We're back in. By the way, before we finish this, if you're interested in a dad and, in a dad and son's t-shirt, oh, advert. Maybe we'll have something for you soon. <laughs> Not in gray though. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know if I'm into the grayness. No, uh, don't worry. Depending on what happens, you'll have a whole swath of colors to choose from. <laughs> I feel like we've been working on that for like at least. We two have years. for two years, <laughs> and it's funny because we just got an email saying I want a dad and son's t-shirt. So we have at least one demand. <laughs> we were talking to a couple people. I don't even know what. Happened. Anyways. Yeah, there's, there's a blow up on Twitter. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, we, it, look, see, oh, I want a dad and son's t-shirt. <laughs> God, I can't believe people might exchange real money that they have to buy food for. Uh, uh, also, I'm just now feeling the bathroom urges. I drank all of this, George. I'm still holding strong. You can also pee it right back out, Liam, into that bottle That's and true. play some Xeno. Oh yeah, you can just go back and forth, in and out forever. Oh my god! You'll like, never have to. You'll never be thirsty just again. Just like Water World. Just like Water World. I always think about this Water. This is what World. happens when it's this humid. It's ridiculous. <laughs>